ready for both the mill and for shows. The most important first step is to keep your pastures as clean as possible because if your pastures are clean, your alpacas are going to stay much cleaner and that makes your job a lot easier when you get around to cleaning your fleeces. The other thing that we do is we put blankets on our show fleeces and our show animals. We, it's a light cotton duck blanket and we put it on after the temperatures during the day get down below oh, the mid 60s and we keep it on then from about November through shearing in April and that assures us of a nice clean relatively dirt free fleece. So that's our, this is where it starts and that's our beginning preparation. Alright, this is uh, the inside of our barn and this is where we do our shearing. We shear twice a year. The first shear is early in April and everyone gets shorn then except for our show string. And then when the show season is over, which is generally mid-May, we share the rest of them. Now, shall we go in and into our fleece room and we'll show you what we do next. Okay, we're in the fleece room now and I want to tell you a little bit about how we're set up. This room is set up so that we can do uh, skirting demonstrations and fiber demonstrations. We have enough room for two tables, but generally it's just one table for our own use. Uh, we bring in the blankets in here, and I store them in these boxes behind me uh, until I'm ready, to, I'm ready to skirt them. As, I, as I'm ready to skirt them, I pull them out, and I put them out onto my skirting table. Now, I want to talk just briefly about the skirting table. This one's homemade. My husband made it for me 15 years ago. It is approximately 40 inches wide and 80 inches long, which is, I found, that's the ideal size and shape for me. I can reach almost completely over it and I can move around it easily. The other thing that's really important is the height and I have this made for my height because bending over, if it's not the right height, it's going to really bother your back and after you've done a couple of fleeces, you'll be very sorry if this isn't the right height for you. Yeah, this isn't the right height for me. I know. <laughs> but this has got a little grid of a two inch by four inch uh, wire, just a plain old chicken wire type thing. And I found that works really well. It keeps the fleece from going through, but it allows dirt and the heavier debris to go through. And one thing I do when I skirt is I'll, I'll kind of bounce it like this, and that allows a lot of dirt from the fleece to go onto the ground. So this is, for me, it's worked out as kind of the ideal. And then you also take a sample from each fleece every year and you mark it like this one is uh, is marked with the animal's name plus the year that it was shorn and um, and, and you save these I, I assume yes I've been saving these for 15 years I have a sample for every animal on the farm for every year when we shear I pull one sample out of the middle of the blanket for sending in for a histogram I pull another sample out for me and then I organize the animals fleeces by the name of that animal what that allows me to do is that I can then, if I go to sell the mom, I can show the fleece from every one of her babies. Uh, I can show the fleece from her sister, from her mother, and it gives a lot of information both to me for my breeding program and to my customers so they can really see what they're buying. It's not just a snapshot of this year. And it also talks about the range that that animal line will produce. It does. And, and so that can educate you in terms of do you want to repeat that breeding or try a, uh, for a little different effect by looking for more, an animal that has more crimp or looking for an animal that perhaps has a little bit more uniformity and um, it will help you make an informed breeding decision rather than I like that one because it was a champion so I'm going to breed it to this one because this one's a champion. Right. Okay, shall we move on now to talking about the AOBA standard for uh, for evaluating the fleece and how we go about that. Today we're going to talk about how to skirt a wakaya fleece. Um, it's not a difficult job, but it does require a lot of concentration and you have to have some basic skills. So we'll go over that skill set. And then as you get into skirting your own fleeces, you can develop your own techniques. And the more you do, the more you will be able to uh, do it more quickly. I wanted to show you um, how, how the blanket is laid out. So you're looking, this is looking down on the blanket, the prime blanket that we pulled off. The legs and the neck are not here, nor is the belly. And 
So this is the neck area, and, and then down in here is the belly, here's the hind area here. Conceptually, uh, you want to um, look at where the prime fleece is and where it changes to more of a secondary fleece. Find that line and go all the way around the blanket and take that out. Now Pamela will show you on the fleece actually how that works. But this is just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. This is the Wakaya scorecard, and it's an important educational tool for the breeders. Um, and I'm going to show you how it works and what you can look for and how you can actually raise your score by doing a better starting job. Now the fineness and the handle are worth 20 points, and that's a big percentage of that card. Um, the fineness is obviously the micron, and that's you look at a chart to figure that out per the age of the animal. The handle is the soft feel at the cut end. The uniformity, there's three pieces to that. Micron, the uniformity, that means is it, is it got very broad and very fine fibers throughout it, or are they more or less even? Um, is, the, is the length even on, on each of the locks as they come out? Because if the length isn't even, then it's a problem in manufacturing. You can get pilling and poor quality yarn because of that. The color, uniformity is going to be important in most of the fleeces, and some of them not as much if you have a mix of colors like you often do with grays and fawns. Um, style and character have to do with the, the crimp style and the density, and those two are related traits. The brightness, obviously, is how much light is reflected, uh, and it's also an indication of fineness. Lack of, lack of guard hair impurities and stain is a place where you can really help your score, and that's worth 15 points. And the annualized weight is worth 20 points. Now, if you don't skirt out the pieces that you should be skirting out, uh, because you're trying to get a lot more points in this, this 20 points of the annualized weight, you also affect the uniformity of micron, the length, possibly the color, and you, you, have, and you lose points here on the guard hair, impurities, stains, and damage. So you're kind of fighting, fighting yourself, and you'll probably end up with less score total than if you had uh, skirted it properly in the first place. You can also use the scorecard as an educational tool for your breeding program so that you're looking at what um, animals are producing the kind of fleece that you want and what improvements need to be made to that fleece and match the male and female accordingly. We have now laid a fleece out. This is a raw fleece that's the prime or the blanket. In other words, the, the main part of the animal. We've laid it out ahead of time to show you how it looks. And if you'll remember Sarah Jane's drawing, this is the back. These are the, the hock or the hips of the animal. This is the main body of the animal. And as you can see, the fleece comes down on either side. This is under the belly. And this up here is the neck and the, again, the front legs. When you do it this way, you really have a clue ahead of time where your rough spots, where your irregular fleece is going to be. It's going to be under the belly, it's going to be around the legs, it's going to be on the neck, and then it's, you have to look for staining around the back side. So this makes your job a whole lot easier. What I do is I start with taking a sample from the prime blanket. In this case, I've taken one from here, one from the center, and then one from the hip. Because this is a light colored fleece, I have gone ahead and put it on a black background. And what I want you to notice is the length of this fleece is pretty much the same in all three samples. The color is very similar in all three samples. The character, in other words, the crimp style, the way it breaks into, into various staples, that's very similar. This is your quality control. This is what you want your skirted fleece to look like all over. It's not, this is not an absolute, it's subjective, but this is your starting point. So I look at that and I'll say, well, the likelihood is my fleece that doesn't conform to that is going to be on the perimeter around the outside. So for example, I will pull this piece of belly fiber and you will see that when you put it next to your control, it's much, much shorter. It's probably half the length. So you know right away that that's something that needs to be skirted out. You'll also see that the character of the fleece is different. This has more guard here. The fleece is straighter. In this case, this is also whiter, but this is a fading fawn, and that's typical of that 
animal, it will start out with a darker color along the dorsal and then it will get lighter. That's not necessarily a negative, so long as everything else about the fleece is the same as your sample. You don't have to pull it because it's a lighter color. But it's a good kind of general guidepost that this is the fleece you're going to want to skirt off. So here again you see there's some fleece with some staining. It's a very, very short staple. This is fleece you have to take off. So I start, and I just, I've done this a lot, so obviously I'll do a little faster maybe than you would your first time. I go around here and I start pulling off the obvious, the obvious fleece that comes off. And here again, here's some fawn fleece, and you take it and you take it next to your sample. See how much shorter it is? The easiest first skirt around is on length. That's the most obvious one, and that's the one that you can do very quickly. So I'll go and start on this, and I just do it by, by pulling, and then I have, a, I have a bucket, and in my bucket I save all of this. This is rug fiber or fiber to make saddle blankets or rope, uh, and so I keep this all together, and as I skirt, I go ahead and I put it in this bucket. All right, now we've spent maybe five or ten minutes going around the perimeter of this fleece. The most important thing we've done is we've looked for second cuts. Here, for example, is a shorter piece that we just laid out. That's the kind of thing you want to pull off. We've looked for any obvious staining on the fleece or any obvious pieces of vegetable matter, large ones or manure or anything like that. And we have gone around the perimeter of the fleece and we have taken off everything like this that's shorter or that's very different in character from the prime fleece. Or stained. Or stained. For instance, uh, sometimes if you give an injection, you'll have a stain from that injection. That ought to be taken out. The other thing that you can take and you should take out is any spots. Because the spot is a different color from your prime fleece and that is going to uh, be an irregularity when you do a, when the mill process of the fleece. It's perfectly fine to do that. If you have a brown spot here, go ahead and pull it out. Do you want to talk about this, the fading fleece? Yeah, a lot of times people will ask me, well, how, do I, should I take all of this out because it's so much lighter than we see in the center here? And really the answer is that you're trying, if, if this is a fading fawn, it's what it is. And so you're not trying to make it not what it is. You're trying to get to the quality that is in your samples. So if you're coming down here and you're coming into lighter fleece, but you can pull it out and see that it's the same as the quality control that we have over here, I would go ahead and leave that in. Um, now on a fading fawn, you may lose a few points in color, but so will everybody else with a fading fawn in the same class. And uh, the ones that are not fading fawns will have an advantage, and that's just the way it is. So. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't try to make it one color. And I have a lot of those, and I've struggled with that, and I finally decided they are all, it's all the beautiful parts that stay in, even if the color is a little bit different. Now at this point, what we have is a mill-skirted fleece. Mill-skirted fleece means that you've taken off the, the big pieces of uh, vegetable matter, the big pieces of uh, dirt, and that Now sort at this of point, you can wrap this fleece up, and you can send it off to the mill, and you shouldn't have any deductions for uh, difference in length, uh, for too, too much vegetation. Yeah, too much vegetation. This should be a full points fleece to send off to the mill. And that's a stopping point for some people, and that's just fine. That's, most of your fleeces are going to go to the mill. The second quality character of fleece, though, is when you want to prepare it for a show. And that's, uh, that's really more a refinement. The standard is the same, but you're refining your, you're refining your skirting so that you're getting something that is as close to perfect as you can make it. There, there are going to be some differences as you go through the fleece from the shoulder to the midside of the hip and then down toward the belly, but it should be substantially the same. I have noticed, however, that uh, people are doing a much better job these days in skirting their fleeces in the show, so that's nice to see. When I do a show skirt, I do this additional step. I lay this halfway down my fleece like this. And I take the fleece from the cut side and I lay it like this. So I can now see the outside of the fleece, the, the opposite of the cut side. And occasionally, this will help you because you'll see some pieces of debris that you missed. There you go. 
<laughs> the stick. Um, the golf sometimes ball. you'll see some underarm hair that's a little bit longer. This is the extra steps you do. Now, picking out vegetable matter is the kind of thing that can make you crazy because you'll never get it all. So, but you can get the bigger pieces. Yeah, out. my rule of thumb is I take the bigger pieces and I toss them. And you'll see here, this is just grass and hay and a little bit of dirt. So I'll spend maybe, oh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes with a fleece like this, picking off those little pieces. And this is something I wouldn't do for a mill skirt, but this is something I will do for a show skirt. And that's because the mill will take it out when they wash yeah, it. Yeah, the mill will take it when they wash it, but you want to have, you don't want to lose points for, for vegetable matter or for staining. And this will kind of pick up everything else. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I do that on both sides. finish that, then I start, I go around my perimeter once again, and I really, really pay attention to my, my control samples, and I pull, I go every little piece at the edge, and I take that piece, it's beautiful, but I hold it up and say, oh, that's maybe more than a half an inch too short, so I'm going to skirt that out. And it's just, again, a refinement of your mill skirt, you're doing more because you're trying to get closer to your ideal and your quality control. You'll also come across these little noils, and um, um, that's just from the shearing process, and you can pull those out as well. A way to find that sometimes is just kind of shake it and see if something pops up, and a lot of times you'll see the second cuts will, will come up, and you can just take those right out. Now, if I really, th this is a frustrating thing for me because it's, it's a balance. You can spend hours on this. I put myself an hour, and then when I'm done, I'm done. Sarah Jane makes a really good point to say, you will lose a lot of points with the judges if you try to leave in too much weight. But on the other side of the coin, <laughs> you can end up with a postage stamp size of fleece if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, trying to get absolutely perfect. I think the standard is, what about a, is it a half inch or a quarter inch? About a quarter to half inch. It depends on if you're going to mill or in the show. In the show ring, in the in the judging ring, um, or the judging area, if you, if if we're looking at the length and it's more or less the same all the way across, then we're satisfied with that. If we've got really short pieces or really long pieces, and there's a big difference, then you know we really want to to dot that because it, it's affecting the product, and this is all about the end product at this point. So at this point, let's, let's say we have done another couple of passes around the perimeter. You, you start, you look at your, this is a really beautiful fleece, and you look at that here, and then you turn your fleece maybe over here, and you just, what you want to see is something that, regardless of what piece you turn up, it's going to look very similar. At that point, you can really say, I'm done. This is, this is a show fleece, and this is ready to go to the judges. Okay. Now, you've got your fleece skirted, and you're getting ready to have it go enter in the show. What I do is I begin at the outside of the fleece and I begin gathering it up, sort of a, a, a so it will be a roll when it's finished. And you do that on both sides? Do it on both sides. that it has a fleece bag, and you have to be sure there's no marking on your fleece bag because they'll put a, they'll put a, a fleece tag in there. They don't want to identify it to you. Then I call this the boa constrictor approach. I, uh, <laughs> it's good you have to have two people, and you kind of like wiggle it along. Remember, when the judge puts your fleece out, it's important that it kind of flows out and it all looks really good. So I think this is an important step. And you see how pretty this fleece is laying out while we put it in? Well, one thing, too, is if you take a fleece, and I can just see a little piece of <laughs> If you take a fleece to uh, many shows, it will get beaten up over time as it's taken out and put, back, put back in the bag. So it does sort of have a, a show life, if you will. Um, and then uh, it's, it's not in good enough shape to continue showing after that. And that could be three or four shows, depending on um, how difficult the fleece is treated at the show. 
and then you're ready to go. This is one fleece. It shouldn't have taken you more than an hour to do, and it's absolutely beautiful. Of course, it goes without saying that when you send this to the mill, ultimately, it's going to be perfect because it's even better than your standard mill fleece. Well, here we are. We're at our end product, and you can see how beautiful and clean this fleece is. So today we've taken you from starting with the pastures and trying to keep those as clean as possible to keep your fleeces clean throughout the year. Uh, in our case, we blanket, but that's totally discretionary and it also depends on your conditions. Then we've shown you how we shear and how we take the fleece off of the animal and store it until we're ready to skirt. Well, and the other thing that you should, you should know is that the more you do it, the more you'll learn the more you learn about the individual characteristics and how they come together in the fleece, um, the better breeding decisions you'll make and the more informed you'll be about uh, how you want to go forward and improve your program. Now we've shown you, we've begun by showing you how we lay the fleece out onto the table and then I walked you through what a mill skirt is, which is kind of just your first pass at a fleece and should be able to be done in maybe five to 10 minutes. So very quickly, some people do it on the same day as shearing. I'm never well organized enough to do that, but, but that works pretty well for some. And then if you wanna to go to the next step and you wanna put your fleece into a show fleece condition, we've showed you how to do that. We've shown you the standards and how to do your quality control. And one of the purposes that we both have in, in doing this video is to encourage people to show their fleeces. As Sarah Jane has said, you will learn a lot from your scorecard, an objective standard of what your fleece really looks like, and just from seeing your fleeces laid out on the table, you will learn tremendously. And another thing is at a show, um, a lot of people just come in, they grab their fleece, and they leave. And really, uh, you should come in, look at your fleece, see how it plays, see how it compares to those that may have placed above or below it, or the quality that's coming out in the different colors. Because if you don't have a picture in your mind of what you're trying to do and what you're trying to produce, then your, your decisions about who you, who you, whom you breed to whom is uh, just a lot more random. And, and you really want to be specific in, in trying to improve specific qualities as you go forward. And finally, I want to say, don't get discouraged with skirting. It is a, it's, a, it's not something you'll be perfect at. But as you do it more and more, you'll get better and better and quicker. And you will be so pleased by the result that you have. And so thank you very much for listening. Thank you.